there is a good chance that you might be using Novel Crafter in the wrong way, and you may even be sabotaging your own efforts to write with AI in the process. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can really simplify the entire process and make it so much easier on yourself and still write quality work inside of Novel Crafter. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just create a new project here. So I'm gonna come here and create a novel and we'll give our novel a name. Let's just call it the small town, I don't know, death, something like that. I'm thinking like Pacific Northwest small town thriller type of thing. I don't read a lot of those, but I kinda, like I watch a lot of films and stuff like that. So that's probably a horrible title, but we'll go with it. You don't need to worry about anything else here except maybe your author name and then we'll say create novel and we're brought into Novel Crafter. Now I get a ton of people coming to me and saying like, I'm so over overwhelmed by Novel Crafter. There's so much to do here. I don't know where to start and it's just causing a lot of problems. And the reality is that you don't really need to worry about it that much. Now, most of the overwhelm comes from filling in things like the outline here. As you can see, this is the outlining page as well as the codex, which is on the right. For the codex, you can like create characters and things like that. And usually when I'm teaching about Novel Crafter, I'm talking about like, take your characters and write a little bit about each character so that the AI knows how to write that character and write them distinctly and things like that. And you also have like locations, objects, lore, subplots, other, all of these things. And I think many people feel an obligation to fill out all of those things. But in reality, you don't necessarily need them. And in some cases, it's probably holding you back. When I think about myself before AI came around, the only prep work that I did for a novel was to write an outline. I didn't write any character profiles. I didn't write any subplots. I just sort of started at chapter one and wrote a paragraph about what happens in chapter one. Then I went to chapter two and wrote a paragraph about that and just continued on till I was done with my outline for the book. And then I would just dive in and start writing. And I think we've lost a little bit of that for those of us who use AI. We're so obsessed with making sure that the AI has all of the little details that it needs when really all it needs is the details for the very next couple hundred words. So let's go ahead and see what I'm talking about. I am not going to do anything here for this codex. I am not going to fill out the outline, although you could if you wanted to keep it simple, like the way I used to write before AI, you could just write a simple outline and that would be sufficient. But let's assume that we're going all the way to like discovery writing, okay? I'm not much of a discovery writer, but I'm curious to try it. So let's Let's go ahead and go to the right tab. Again, we've not filled out anything. The only thing we've done so far is create a new project. And I suppose if you are using AI, you need to make sure that the AI is connected to your Novel Crafter account. Let me just briefly go over that here in the bottom left, you go to settings and make sure that you're connected to an open router or open AI account. Uh, there are also other different accounts here that you can put together, but open router really is the most important one here. If you have fine tuned models in open AI, you might want to add that as well but just make sure this connection is set. Go here and hit connect. This is available only on the eight and $14 tiers. So if you're on the $4 lowest tier, you won't have this option. So you're not able to write with AI. So just make sure that is the case before you go. So once you have connected the AI, all you have to do is come here to the right tab and select add initial scene. And we're starting with chapter one. Now, if you have an idea of what the scene is gonna be about, you can put a summary of it right here. That might help the AI guide a little bit, but again, it doesn't need it. All you need is a description of what happens here in the very beginning. So all you have to do is do a forward slash and select scene beat or continue writing even. Since we have nothing set up so far, continue writing isn't really going to give us anything related to the novel that you've set so far. So we're just gonna say scene beat and let's go ahead and start writing. So we can have, we'll say Diana walks into her office early in the morning at the police station. So I'm gonna add Detective Diana here just to edit my beat just a little bit. And that's all. Uh, now there are a few things that we could maybe do, a few little things that would improve it. You'll notice it says the AI might not have enough context. Now don't worry about this warning too much, but it can give you some interesting points here. For instance, it says no POV is set for the novel. The AI might use a random perspective. That's actually good advice. We wanna make sure that this is all coming from the right perspective 
perspective. So let's go ahead and change that. You can just select edit scene POV and it pulls up this thing here. So we can select maybe first person and we don't have any characters set yet, but I think it'll probably get the idea just from the scene beat. If we wanted to, we could create just a brief character description. I'm just gonna hit save here. And the second warning it gives you here is the beat mentions no codex entries. This leaves too much creative freedom for the AI try to use names instead of pronouns to make sure it knows what you're talking about. So this is a good advice to have the pron the names instead of pronouns here. I'm not too worried about it because I understand how the AI works. But again, don't worry about having too many codex entries. Even though this is telling you to add more codex entries, you don't necessarily need to do that. So you can completely ignore this warning. Now, if you wanted to make sure for 100% that we're getting the right point of view. So if I select first person point of view and then it picks some other random dude to have the point of view from, then you can come over here, create a new entry, and we're just going to call this detective Diana. I'll make sure that just the word Diana works as well. And then I'm just going to put here in the description, the main character. She is a police detective in a small Pacific North West town. Okay. And that's, you know, that's very basic. I'm not going to put anything else in there about her backstory, about her looks, about anything. We're just putting that in there just to make sure we've got the right POV, right? So we'll go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to go back into the settings and make sure that POV is set. First person, select the character of Detective Diana. Then we'll go back to the right tab. Again, this is the absolute minimum. In fact, you, I'm even doing more than the minimum here. You don't have to select the POV, the point of view. All you need to do is just write out the details. So from here, I'm going to select like generate pros and I have a whole bunch of prompts here that I've created over the years, but the one that you can use by default is just general purpose. And then you select the model that you would like. My favorite is typically Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but you may have others that you enjoy as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this and it goes ahead and writes the scene. I dragged my feet into the station, the weight of exhaustion hanging heavy on my shoulders. The familiar scent of stale coffee and paper files greeted me as I pushed open my office door, collapsing into my chair. I let out a long weary sigh. My fingers fumbled with the lid of my thermos, desperate for that first hit of caffeine. Steam curled up, teasing my senses. I took a sip, wincing at the bitter taste. It wasn't great, but it'd have to do. So you can see it's following the steps that I gave it. And then the next step would be to go through and edit this text. So I can hit apply to make to show that I like this text and I can just go and say, okay, so what goes next? Now you may be wondering, but Jason, you tell us to put all of this information in the codex so that it gets her character right and her dialogue right and all of these details. Like, how is it going to know my world building if I don't put in a ton of different entries about the world that we're in or about the crime or about all the clues that are supposed to happen in this mystery? Don't worry about that. Most of those details can be found in the outline and you introduce them as you need them. So yeah, it might not know who the killer is, but you probably don't want it to know who the killer is anyway because it would likely give that away early. Sometimes it's actually better to give it fewer details because it, just like the reader doesn't know what's going to happen next. Now you of course need to be aware of certain things. Like if there's something that needs to be foreshadowed in this first chapter for something that's going to happen a lot later, then you put that in, but you don't need to explain it to the AI about, oh, this is a foreshadow of something that's to come later. Like you just put it in your description, in your scene beat. So we go to the end of this here and we say there's been an incident down in the harbor. So it added that. So if you're a discovery writer, you may say, oh, that's an interesting detail. And you can follow that thread and just see where it goes. Or if you have a very specific idea of where the thing should go, you edit it to make sure it is consistent with your vision. And then either way, we come down here to the bottom. As I followed Martinez out of my office, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was going to be one hell of a long day. And here I thought I might actually catch up on some paperwork for once. So much for that plan. Okay. Good transition, right? And it also gave us a name for the other officer. We his name's Martinez. Doesn't look like we have a first name, just Officer Martinez. That's fine. We can go ahead and use that name. Um, I'm going to actually break the scene here because it sounds like we're going to be moving to a different location. So I'm going to hit stay in the same chapter, but create a new scene and then we'll create another scene beat. Now we could write out another scene beat here and I'll do that right now, but then I'll show you something else that we can do. They arrive on the scene in the harbor. Now I might not normally do a harbor because I kind of want this to be a Pacific Northwest thing because I don't want to go through and edit everything thing right now because I'm filming a YouTube video here and don't have the time. We're just going to run with what it said. They immediately figure out what the problem is because a boat has rammed into the side of the harbor, but 
pinned ben between the boat and the concrete of the harbor is a man. Now this might be a little gruesome for Claude's liking, so we'll go here and try it with Claude first. Okay, so it is doing it. The call came in just as I was finishing my third cup of coffee. Dispatch says there was... Okay, so it didn't read this bit here too well. So this first paragraph actually doesn't work here, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, but this works as well, and this is why you need to go through and read it and make sure it's consistent and that it flows from one beat to the next. As I pulled up to the harbor, the flashing lights of emergency vehicles painted the misty morning in surreal hues. I stepped out of my car, the gravel grunch crunching under my boots. The smell of salt water and diesel fuel hung heavy in the air. What have we got? I called out to Officer Jensen, who was already taping off the area. He jerked his head toward the water's edge. You're going to want to see this for yourself, detective. And then it goes on and describes things. Now, let's say you're a discovery writer. You've done this. You kind of like where it's going, but you don't really know what's going to happen next. And you just want to see what the AI suggests to you. You just do another forward slash and select continue writing. So Select your prompt. So it goes from this first paragraph here, the, or the last one from the last beat. As the team sprang into action around me, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of something bigger. The harbor had always been a hub of activity in our small town, but now it felt like the epicenter of a storm that was about to break. I pulled out my notepad and began jotting down observations. The victim's clothes were high end, definitely not your average fisherman or weekend boater. His watch, a gleaming Rolex, was still ticking away on his wrist. Robbery didn't seem to be the motive here. So that's actually interesting. Like if I'm a discovery writer, suddenly it's making up details details about how this person is a wealthy murder victim and he's got a Rolex but it hasn't been stolen so the so the robbery wasn't the motive and so like already it's giving me some really interesting details and I can just pull on these threads as I want and then maybe I'll have a specific idea of what should happen next then I can guide it but there may be times when I just want to see what it gives me and in this case I would be like yeah I kind of like this let's roll with this then I'd go through and edit this to make sure it works and continue on so as you can see this doesn't have to be complicated. Really, the only prep work that I did for this is that I did come over here and create one character for the protagonist with minimum information here. Like you really don't have to fill this out at all. And then I set the POV here in the settings, right? The POV stands for point of view because I wanted this to be first person from the detective's perspective. And that's only to make sure that it is getting the point of view correct and not like going off to some random detective somewhere else and trying to show it from their point of view. Now, I think if you wanted to, you could probably do without even that. And then without an outline, without any other codex entries, I just dived right into the story and it turns out to be okay. You don't have to have a lot of crazy stuff. And in fact, I find that authors who are obsessing too much over the codex and the outline and everything are really sabotaging themselves because they're not getting to the actual writing. And it's the writing that is the most important thing. You're not going to be able to do anything with an unwritten book. You have to write and finish the book first. And here, just in a couple of minutes, I already generated a thousand words, most of which were actually pretty good and wouldn't require much editing on my part. So you can move very quickly through a book and just make progress in this way. In fact, I'm kind of wanting to continue this story and do a full maybe discovery written book. I've never discovery written a book before, so maybe that would be a good project. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do like a series of live streams or something like that, where I would actually go through and discovery write a book like this. I typically write fantasy, but I feel like most of my fantasy books, I have a very clear vision for them, so they wouldn't work so well as a discovery written book. So I'm thinking maybe I would go with this Pacific Northwest mystery, write a book in that way using discovery writing techniques. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Now, if you're still finding Novel Crafter to be a little overwhelming, I did do an entire free course on it here on the YouTube channel. You can check that out at the link that I'll have right here. It will tell you everything you need to know. So if you do want to fill out the codex and all of that stuff, as long as you don't spend too much time obsessing over it before getting to the actual writing and you want to learn everything there is to know, go check out that video and I'll see you in the next one.